shining like the day King of heaven come. Love and Bow to babe, one bending knee, the Savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born, he shall reign forever. You have no rival, 
Morning, Hope Church. Merry Christmas. I am so glad that you have joined us this morning. Hopefully the breakfast is cooked, hot cocoa's made, you got the TV on, obviously, or a computer or phone, whatever it may be. You're in your pajamas and you're getting to watch the online recorded uh, Christmas service. I am so thankful that you have joined us this morning. And as I get started this morning, I really want to just recap this year. You know, on the church side of things in July or in June, excuse me, um, I had the privilege of going for the first time to Costa Rica on a mission trip. And it was such a blast. It was so cool to see the way that the Lord moved in the different ministries there and to watch our group of people, teenagers and adults, grow um, in their faith and everything that happened. It was just awesome to see God move. Then a month later in July, we had over 30 students attend our CIY summer conferences. And those are such a blast. Anytime students can get out of, of their normal routine and get away from some of the distractions and get off their phones a little bit, and they're able to, to be in an atmosphere for five days straight where they're in community, where they're in scripture, where they're worshiping, where they are um, just immersed in the Lord. Um, it is such a blessing. And, and that was so fun. Uh, to be a part of. And then one, one, uh, one other thing, a third thing for me was being able to preach more. I loved being able to share in that capacity with you on a Sunday morning. Um, and, and I just want to thank Pastor Jim for that, um, that, that opportunity. And um, I, I look forward to, to more days like that. And obviously right now being able to do that with you as well. Um, on the family side of things, Piper, Turned two. That was uh, that was in October. Oliver turned four back in February. Kelsey and I celebrated eleven years of marriage in August, and in November, 
And I know that this topic, real quick, just so you know, it's a little bit of a hot take. But in November, I drove to Republic, Missouri one morning, and I bought my wife a blue Kia Carnival, a blue Kia Carnival. And I just want to make it clear because a couple people have asked about the vehicle that we drive now. And if you look on the Kia website, the Kia Carnival is considered and is listed as an MPV, a multi-purpose vehicle. There's never a mention of a V, an A, or an N when speaking of this vehicle. So we drive a multi-purpose vehicle, a blue Kia Carnival. And I can tell you one thing with full certainty, my wife loves her van. Okay, let's look at scripture real quick. You know, um, just over, over the last couple of days, I think it was just yesterday, actually, I was listening to the Daily Audio Bible and, and the book of Haggai got brought up. Now, when I mention books that I spend a lot of time in or, or read, I, I don't normally think of the book of Haggai. I don't know much about it. I haven't re read it much. But as I listened yesterday and, and as I learned what it was talking about, it really just stuck out to me as something to focus on for next year. And what's happening in the book of Haggai is that the Israelites have been exiled. They've been deported. So they no longer live in Jerusalem. They no longer live in Israel. They're gone. The people of God are not home right now. They've been conquered. What happens is now they are allowed to go home. They're allowed to go back to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was where the temple of God stood at one point. It's where God resided. It's where, where his glory was. It's where he was able to interact with his people. We, maybe a better term here, uh, we were able to interact with the Lord. The people could interact with the Lord because of the temple. But there's an issue. The people move back. They begin to rebuild the temple and then they stop. And let, let me pick up here in, in the book of Haggai. I'm going to read 1 through 11 in the first chapter. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Shalithel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of uh, Jehozadak, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, these people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord, speaking of the temple. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses while this house lies in ruins? You have paneled houses, yet the, the temple of the Lord lies in ruins. God is essentially saying, what are your priorities? What identifies you? What's important to you? And for them, it was rebuilding their houses, not the temple of the Lord. And this is what the Lord says in verse five. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you will never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into a bag with holes. He's saying everything is meaningless without the Lord. Everything we do is meaningless without the Lord. And so here's what it says in the middle. I want to skip down to, to the middle of verse nine. It says, why declares the Lord of hosts? Because my house that lies in ruins, while each of you busies himself with his own house. And that is the line I want us to remember for next year. My house or the Lord's house lies in ruins while each of you busies himself with his own house. So here's my encouragement. Here's my challenge for myself and for you guys. What's next year look like? For you, what will, will God's place in your life, in your heart, will it lie in ruins? Will you make time for the Lord? Will he be uh, something that's high on your priority list? Or will Will your faith, will your, um, will your Christianity, will, will your, um, you, the, the truth of scripture, will it be in a low point in your life where it just lies in ruins, yet you're busy building your own house, building your own kingdom? This really 
struck something with me. You know, I need to close this out. The video is, is, is getting a little long. I see the timer on my, on my screen as I'm recording. I remember back to uh, football in high school and coach said, hey, there, there's a list. And it starts, it's, it goes, God, family, school, football. Now that was during practice. Sometimes during the games, that list would get, get mixed around. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But I love that he laid that out. And that would be my challenge for next year. If you were to lay out your priorities, think about your job, think about income, think about your house, think about your hobbies, think about your health, think about your children or your family or your future spouse, whomever, whatever it may be, where does the Lord stand in that list? And based off Haggai, boy, the Lord's not number one. We'll drink, but we'll be thirsty. We'll eat, but we'll never be full. We will never be satisfied until the Lord is first in our lives. And not just first, but we continually, continually, continually pursue after the Lord as first in our lives. Hey, I love you guys. Um, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Safe travels this week if you're, if you're driving anywhere and seeing any family. And look forward to seeing you next Sunday, January 1st, 1030 a.m. here in person at Hope Church. All right, we'll see you guys later. Well, good morning, Hope Church, and Merry Christmas from the St. Clair family. Amanda and I are just so grateful to be a part of this church and uh, to just share life with all of you, and I hope you're sharing Christmas with loved ones and with family this morning and just having a wonderful morning. Um, I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you. Um, you know, I was out buying some last minute Christmas presents and I happened to be in this one shoe store, very cool shoe store, and I was just kind of looking at the, the whole rack of shoes and thinking if I wanted to get these shoes, and there was another gentleman standing right beside me. And, um, you know, he struck up a conversation with me. And uh, we started talking about, you know, he had these cool Jordans on and all this stuff. And we started talking about shoes. And, um, you know, I wasn't expecting this. But then he started to share with me about Christ. He started to share about what Christ had done in his life. And uh, just to kind of describe him a little bit, you know, he had like this big heavy coat on and this giant chain with a big G on it and these big baggy pants. And and I mean, honestly, you know, I thought, man, this guy is like a gangster. I mean, he looked like a gangster. Uh, and so he tells me, hey, I was in a gang in New York City. I'm like, no way. And uh, he, he had gotten in trouble, he had gotten arrested, and he, he, he got sent to jail. And uh, in jail, he tells me that he had this vision, and he had a vision of his lawyer and the judge, and that they were going to release him. So lo and behold, that actually happened, and he got released. And uh, he said that the Lord had showed him Heaven. I mean, crazy story he's telling me. It sounds like the book of Ezekiel or something. And uh, so he was so thankful. And he said, you know, what a gift it was for him to have been released from prison. He said that what he had done, he could have spent a long time in jail. And so here we are in this shoe store and he's telling me all about Jesus. And I was like, this is awesome. Someone is evangelizing to me, like that hardly ever happens, but he's telling me all about Jesus, and I was so glad to hear. And um, he said, you know, from now on, this is what his life's about. It's about telling people what Jesus did in his life. And I thought, man, how cool is that? And I, I just started thinking about all the things that, you know, I was there to buy a gift, to give to someone, and yet here we are talking about Jesus in the middle of all these cool things we could buy from one another. It just, it just, it's like the Holy Spirit just reminded me, hey, the people around you every day, man, these are the gifts in our lives. And God wants to work in people's lives. And again, I was just so thankful to hear from this guy. We had a good time. 
I want to just read a couple of scriptures about who God is. He is such a giver. And here's one from 1 Timothy chapter 6. You know, it says that he gives life to everyone, right? And everything. And in John 3, 16, you know, we know that one. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Here's another one I want to read, 1 Corinthians 15. It says he, he gave us victory. Um, Psalm 29, it says the Lord gives us strength. Um, and, and here's one from James 1, 5 that you may have heard. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously. And so as you start to get into these scriptures, you start to see what a giver God is. And uh, he, he has given us so much. I just want you to remember that today during this Christmas season. God has given us all so much. And if we were to just sit here and and kind of make two columns in our head or take some scrap paper today and, and you just, uh, on one side, you wrote down everything that the Lord has blessed you with this past year. And then on, on the other side, you think, you write down everything that you have blessed God with this year. I think we would find out really quickly how lopsided it is. God has given us so much, and yet what have we really given back to him? It just doesn't take long to realize how blessed we all are. And as you are with your family and you're opening gifts and you're just remembering what the Savior uh came to do and that, that that Jesus was born into this world for us. I just want you to remember how much you've been given. And in that same spirit, let's let's continue to give to others. Let's bless each other. Let's share with one another what God has done in all of our lives. It's so exciting. And uh, again, have a blessed day. Love you so much. And can't wait to see you soon. Bye. Good morning, Hope Church. Merry Christmas. I'm here in my office and so excited just to take a moment and say, I love all of you and I hope that you've had a great Christmas. I got a Christmas card and it's from a little girl in our church named Hannah and it says this, Dear Pastor, thank you for telling me about Jesus. I mean, how sweet is that? And then inside, it has a picture of me, I think up at the pulpit with an HC logo. And then I think she's down here and there's this big heart. What a wonderful gift and a reminder to me of one of the greatest gifts we have ever been given. In the early uh, first chapter of Matthew, there's a there's a scripture that it's it's maybe one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible, and I want to remind you about that this morning. It says an angel was speaking, and he says, "Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel." The greatest gift we've ever been given, Emmanuel translated means God with us. As I reflect upon this last year, it's been a good year. It's been a year that I've really been able to work on some things inside of me. And it's it's been a year that I was able to take a sabbatical and get renewed in the Lord. And it's been a year when my mom passed away and we've had some other struggles with loved ones passing away. And in everything that's happened this year, here's what I know for sure. It makes a difference when we express the love of Jesus to others, just like it did for uh, sweet little Hannah. It makes a difference when you and I understand the greatest gift we've ever been given is Emmanuel, God with us. I bless you this very day, Christmas day. 
And I pray that your identity is not based on what you wish you would have done or wow, look what I have done, but your identity is based on Christ and what he thinks of you. God gave the very first Christmas gift, his son Jesus born as a baby, Emmanuel, that God could be with us. I look forward to this next year. I think it's going to be one of our best years ever. I look forward to seeing you in just another couple of days. And until I do, I wanna pray and I wanna bless you on this Christmas morning. Father, thank you for the family and friends at Hope Church and I pray your blessing upon them. I pray that you would encourage them, that they would find peace that comes from God with us. On this day, we're thankful, Heavenly Father, that you allowed your son to come because you care about us that much. God, we lift up already this next year to you and pray, Lord, that we would walk in your strength, that we would walk in your favor, that we would live in the blessings of God. Bless my friends today. In Jesus' name, amen. I look forward to seeing you this next year. God bless you and I love you so much, Hope Church. What an honor to be your pastor. And thank you, Hannah, for such a sweet card that you gave me for Christmas. Will you please sing this final song with us? Behold, the King has come. Adore him, come, 
Let us adore Him, for He alone is worthy, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore Him, come, let us adore Him, for He alone is worthy, Christ Hold on, I forgot to put this in. The Packers play today, Christmas Day, at noon. They play the Miami Dolphins, and yes, they still have a playoff chance. Don't forget to watch the Packers. Don't forget to root for the Packers. Go Pack Go.